Bills Only podcast. Paul Farvar here, your host. This was done via the wild world of Zoom with comedian Mindy S. from Virginia Beach. It's a fun one. Uh, check it out. It's really fun. We uh, we had some fun on Zoom. You can check it out on YouTube or um, audio wherever you're listening right now. Subscribe if you haven't. Check out our sponsors. Give us a five-star review. And that's it. Enjoy this fun podcast. PaulFComedy.com for my upcoming dates. Be safe. Hey, all. Paul Farver here, your singles only host and date coach in a way, right? We all know that I'm not a professional and I love giving people advice, but I sometimes can't it's out my pay grade. I can't handle some of the stuff that people need. And you need sometimes a professional relationship coach. That's why I've teamed up with Relationship Hero to provide that service to my fans, friends, podcast listeners. If you're struggling with a breakup or real relationship issues, sometimes you just can't rely on friends like myself and your your circle of friends. You need professional relationship advice. And that's what Relationship Hero does. RelationshipHero.com. Check them out. You can talk to them, you can show them text messages, and they'll give you an expert analysis. They do outside-the-box thinking. That's why I signed up with them, to be honest with you. I read one of their reviews uh, a couple days ago. Jeff wrote, excellent advice was given, gave them a five-star review. They think outside the box to give you honesty and compassion. You can tell they are extremely qualified. Now, I'm not extremely qualified, right? We all know that. I'm a comedian, former lawyer, former musician. I have zero professional analysis and relationship experience or training. They do. You need to use them. And here's what we're going to do. If you go to the website, relationshiphero.com backslash singles only, you are going to get $50 off your first one hour session. Relationshiphero.com backslash singles only. Check it out. Tell them I sent you, but they'll know because you're using the link. And, uh, I think it's going to give you the advice you need. You can call them. You can show them texts. You can do everything. They are there for you. Check them out, relationshiphero.com. You're welcome. Hey, singles only folks. Have I ever uh, steered you wrong? Have I ever, you know, given you bad advice? I've been here for four years now for some of you guys. The longest relationship I've ever been in is with this podcast. And uh, I've given you everything I can. I brought guests that have informed you, entertained you, told you how to date, told you how not to date. And now I'm bringing you another tool, a superpower, if you will. It's called the Keys Dating Keyboard. You download this app and it saves you thousands and thousands and thousands of hours in dating. What it is is it has messages for every situation, breaking the ice, being flirty, responding to something that was asked of you, um, or most importantly, breaking up with someone or ending things. Instead of ghosting, you can be a responsible person and choose multiple different responses. It is the coolest thing I've ever seen. When I saw this app, I was like, I need to, I need to get this to my folks. And, you know, it's been proven that uh, singles spend over 8,000 messages, you know, hours on apps uh, until they find what they're looking for. Well, this is going to save you so much more time. It's a free app for you guys. That's what I'm going to do for you. You guys download the app. It's, uh, if, you, if you Google dating keyboard keys or uh, keys keyboard, um, it's going to pop up. Promo code singles only free. Boom. Don't tell me I don't do anything for you guys. So this is it's being, you know, it, only certain people have access to this, but you guys are going to be ones that have it. You guys are basically going to be testers on this app. And um, I'm inviting you to listen to this, to use it, and uh, before it's released to the general public, tell me what you think. Download the app. Use the password. Singles only to get in. Anyone that signs up will be free for one year. One year of free usage. I don't know what else to tell you. I am doing everything I can to get you guys to stop listening to this podcast and and find love, whatever the hell that means. Keys, dating, keyboard. Promo code, singles only. You're welcome. By now, you know that I'm a lawyer, right? Everyone does. And uh, I I don't really practice anymore, although I still have a license. Um, But when I need a lawyer, um, and I do often need a lawyer, um, 
I contact my friend Scott Shapiro. Um, if you're injured uh, on the job or need compensation, you're entitled to payment for more than you know. A lot of times, companies will try to settle with you so you don't get a lawyer because they don't want you to know all the monies you're entitled to. Uh, Scott Shapiro has been uh, helping injured workers for over 20 years. In addition, his firm handles multiple other cases, including uh, personal injury cases and entertainment law issues. He has handled a lot of uh, my entertainment stuff as well as those of uh, guests on the show and listeners. So you need a lawyer. Sure, you can consult me. But uh, if you want a free consultation from the best, uh, don't take any chances. Contact my friend, Scott Shapiro. His number, 312-648-8800. Or check out his website, scottshapirolegal.com. There are other Scott Shapiros. Make sure you call the right one, 312-648-8800 or scottshapirolegal.com. Tell him I sent you and he will be very happy. It's time for another edition of Singles Only Podcast. We are doing this one via Zoom. So if you're listening, uh, this is not live, but you guys will know the difference because the sound quality is so, so good. I have a comedian on, uh, very funny, from the East Coast. Let's just get right into it. Uh, Mindy S. Uh, are you there, Mindy? There you are. Hey, Hi. how are you? How are you? Thanks for doing the podcast. Thanks for having me. So you are a comedian um, on the East Coast and oh, yeah. single. Say you're that again? Single? You're single still? Oh, you broke up a little. Yes, I'm single. Okay. How is that possible? Oh, you- there's a plethora of reasons, I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> I mean, do you want me to just pick one reason? Well, let me ask, let's start, let's start over. When was the last relationship you were in? How long ago was that? The first, like the last kind of relationship I was in was like three months ago, but it only lasted for a month and a half. So I don't know if that counts. Not really. Before that, I dated a comic on and off for a year, which was a terrible idea. Um, And then before that, I dated somebody for five years uh, that probably you know, killed me inside. And that's why I'm still single. Why do you say he kills you inside? He, um, not to get too psychological, but do you, are you familiar with the type of person that's like a narcissistic sociopath? Sure. I'm real attracted to those types of people. Like yeah. that's my go-to. Like if there's a narcissist in the room, I'm like, so what are you like, what are you going to do later? You know, like, so he just was a bad dude okay. and I got like addicted to him. And I thought I was over it, honestly, but I was in a, like a food line the other day. And first off, he still randomly DMs me, but I was in a food line the other day and he DMed me some dumbass song from like six years ago, like the lyrics to it. And I immediately just started like bawling in this food line. And I was like, you're not better yet. So Wait, what, what lyrics were this? Was it like personal to you or was it like a, uh like a Beyonce song or something. This is so stupid. Well, okay, so let me preface by saying I'm four and a half years sober. Like I haven't had a drink in four and a half years. Thank you. But when um, we were still dating, you know, the first couple hundred times, we would get hammered and go out to the bars and stuff. And he told me that that song, it's like, um, I can't sing, but it's like, tonight. Oh, yeah. We are young. are young, and it's like I'll carry you home tonight. He always thought that song reminded me of him because I used to get hammered and he used to carry me home. So that song came on. That song, I guess, reminded him of me, and I was like, <laughs> like it was just not. But I hate him, so that's the no, thing, you know. Wait a minute. So he knows you're sober, though, right? Yeah, we got back together once I got sober. And he almost, like, hated me more. Well, it seems like he's, like, encouraging, like, a time in your life where you've moved on from, right? He's a hot, he's a mess. He messaged me, like, a week ago and was, like, he's had a girlfriend for over a year that looks like the Asian version of me. She's literally, like, me, but not quite. You know what I mean? Okay. And um, I'm, like, she just is. He only dates girls that look exactly like me. 
but she he's been in a relationship for a year yet he was like it's not too late for us is it i was like maybe when i kill you myself how long have you been not dating okay not, so not dating it's been a couple years but you guys still like the band-aid opened up a couple times you guys. but until he started dating this chick we were still hooking up like every like six months until he yelled at me and was a psychopath every time and then I was like okay you're still the same person and then like in like six months I'd forget again and like try it again and then you'd be the same person again okay so he sent you the lyrics you're at a food line which is I assume a supermarket on the east coast similar to what we have it sounds supermarket <laughs> yeah and you got you start crying when you hear the lyrics from or he sends you the lyrics from fun that's yeah. the band name and uh what did you write back or did you respond? Did you engage? Oh, God. I'd have to pull him up. I responded because I'm a masochist. Um, I'm not sure what I responded. Okay. Something like, something like, um, makes me sad. And then I was like, told him I was crying in the food line. And I was like, at least I know, <laughs> this is so pathetic. I was like, at least I know I'm not dead inside, like all dramatically. And he was like, put the laughy emoji. And I was like, no, I'm serious he's dead in you're implying that he's dead inside no i was saying at least i'm not i know i'm not dead inside because real emotion like came uh, out of my body and i was like oh my not, god was he a guy who didn't show emotions or something too or no he no he was like emotional as hell but like i feel like ever since him when i date people i have like I forget I'm even seeing someone unless I'm with them. Like, I, I feel like I can't establish an, a, like, emotional connection to anyone. So, like, when I cried in the food lion, I was like, and it wasn't like, you know how you, like, start to think about something and there's, like, tears that, like, kind of come out. And then there's, like, tears that are, like, the ones that, like, just drop out of your face. I've heard about this. I don't have emotions, but I've heard about this. Yes. I didn't know I had any anymore either but so there was the kind that like drop out of your face and it was just like like literal like tears is not the word it was embarrassing but i i, I really didn't mean it because i was like oh my god i can like you're not dead you just buried everything yeah and that's refreshing to know that's good yeah that means you have feelings and when you have tears in food lion it's like a it's like the new version of the eric clapton song can i ask you a question your like fingers, so like you, you lifted your fingers. One was really pink. What is that? I you to ask me this. Okay, so I have a lot of hobbies. And earlier today, I was tie-dyeing a Taylor Swift band tee. And like... <laughs> Wait a minute. This is a hobby where you, you tie-dye Taylor Swift tie all, all band shirts? So... I have, I sell a lot of stuff online. Like, you know how people flip like baseball cards? Sure. I flip like designer clothing. But when I can't find that kind of stuff, I buy Harley shirts, band shirts, bleach them, and then like reverse tie dye them and then tie dye them over. And like they sell really well. So anyway, I was just tie dyeing some shirts in the kitchen, you know? And okay. then I was like, I'm gonna think I murdered my ex boyfriend. And <laughs> It looks like you murdered like a like a pink bunny. Um, yeah. I washed my hand like six times because I knew that you would. I was like, I hope he doesn't ask me about that. I but I mean, wait uh, yeah. so wait. Um, so this tie dye thing is this something you've been doing during quarantine, or this is something you've always done? You are out of the loop. Literally everyone tie dye during quarantine. No, I do know that. I'm just saying. Did you okay. start the, did you do this before also, or this is a new hobby? I started during quarantine, but it turns out I'm like, I don't want to, like an idiot savant of tie-dye. <laughs> Isn't that the word when you're just like okay. really randomly good at something? You're really good at it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna, good. I, yeah, it's a good thing to be good at. This is something that's going to take, you're going to keep doing this. And so I'm assuming, right? After this is all over and we're back in the real world. Tie-dyeing? I yeah. mean, I sold like or four tie-dye shirts this week. Yeah. So I was like, well, let me tie-dye some more shirts, you know? And they sell for like 30, 35 bucks a piece. And let's be honest, nobody's buying like Mindy comedy t-shirts. So <laughs> like, I might as well tie-dye some shirts. I'm going to I'm gonna talk to you after this too, because I, I'm selling a lot of my parents, my mom's designer clothing and everything, because uh, we're cleaning out their house. We talked about it on the podcast, but 
what my question is 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 this something that you're going to keep doing and if so like is this something that the person that you try to date or whatever is going to have to accept as part of your if that is a deal breaker, then like they don't know anything about me. Well, let's talk about that. What are your like? Are you looking to date someone now? Like, I, we're gonna get to the comedy, the comedian. That was a huge mistake. But are you looking to like? Are you on the apps or are you meeting people other than the lion? I was on the apps until. I disputed the charge with my bank, long story short. Now my Apple, now Apple won't let me down and load any apps until I go to the app or to the Apple store and I've just been lazy. So like, I literally haven't dated online in like two months just because my apps won't download. So I've just what been like, about? not doing anything. Like I'm, I'm obviously not in like a huge rush to find somebody. And like, I kind of feel when I do have somebody, I like, I'm real judgy and like, I kind of like hate a lot of things that people do. Okay. And so and like, and I also like being by myself a lot too. Like I like tie-dyeing in my kitchen when I feel like tie-dyeing in my kitchen. I don't want some dude to be like, you want to go like grub, you know, grub lunch. I'm like, I'm, I think tie-dyeing right now. You yeah. know what I mean? No, that's uh, that's the decisions you make now. Cause I've found so many hobbies during COVID. I'm like, I love, I always like being alone anyway, but now it's like, do I even want to go out and eat with someone and like have to be like, like talk to them? You yeah. Know? Like, I feel like, I feel like you need to do that just to stay sane, but also yeah. like, I also love being alone too. So it's hard, but well, um, I don't like having people expecting me to be like on, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. so you do comedy. So let me hear some of your material. I'm like, can I just like eat my tacos, you know? Yeah. yeah Cause you're a Taco Bell in this hypothetical. <laughs> I hypothetically I was at like a classy taco place just now. Oh, okay, my bad. What are you like okay, so if you haven't been on the apps because of this dispute, can I ask what this dispute is about? Like was it is it over a lot of money or was it like a twelve dollar app? I don't know because I'm being like a huge wuss and I won't like call them and find out, but like so I disputed it, like I kept getting all these random two dollar, three dollar charges, but then every day I would owe like twelve dollars to the app store until finally I called my bank and I was like, look, I don't know, I couldn't figure out how to get rid of them. Like when I looked at what apps I was paying for, they like wouldn't show up, but then I was paying like ten to twelve dollars a day on BS. I do photography and so I downloaded a bunch of like random photography apps. And then, like, every time I've ever done a free trial, I've never stopped the free trial. So, like, stop. But anyway, so the, my bank decided to dispute every charge. And I'm scared to go to the Apple store because I'm scared they'll be like, yeah, as long as you pay off this $800, then you can have your app store back. Call your bank. You can just call them and be like, what, what's still in dispute? And then you can decide what you want to dispute or not. They disputed every charge I ever had. Oh, you like can they, had, they disputed the dispute. every single app I was paying for. You can stop the dispute. You can tell them, hey, I'm not disputing this anymore, unless it's $800. Well, the thing is, I did sales for a long time. I was in sales. I worked for Verizon Wireless, but people thought we were the Apple store. So, like, I could literally fix somebody's phone with, like, my eyes closed. And I have never had this thing happen in the whole thing however many years I worked at Verizon so I'm like this screwing up your it's screwing up your dating life right now you should I mean if I cared a whole lot I'd go to the Apple store what what are your goals with do you want to get married and have kids or anything I I want to get married eventually but I don't want to marry somebody that like I like half-ass care about like I'd rather be by myself than like settle ever you know do you want and to get married? what's the point I, of being married yeah exactly and i would not mind having a kid like i would always thought i wanted to have like one kid but then i started doing stand-up and then i was like okay my life could go like two ways like i could do the stand-up thing and actually like hustle at it and get it really really where i want it to be and i could be happy that way or else if it's not going to happen like that i guess i'll get married and have a kid <laughs> So it's like your, it's like your backup plan. It's like your safety. I don't, yeah. It's like my, like if my comedy dream is going to come like crashing down, then I might as well like have a baby and live in the suburbs, you know? Let me ask you this. Why can't your safety net be tie-dyeing shirts and, uh, <laughs> and doing this like 
this uh, business of designer clothing, flipping designer clothing. Maybe I'm doing that up. now just to give myself the like, I'm doing that. I do photography. I was working for a photography company and now I'm just freelancing with photography and then stand up. So I quit my nine to five basically to pursue stand up. And then, you know, ever, now that COVID happened, nothing's open here. Literally nothing's open here. You guys aren't open? Where, where, what are the don't. I live in Virginia Beach. We have a Funny Bone here. We have a couple other smaller comedy clubs. And they're all um, closed? They're all closed. Not one comedy club can be open right now in this area. And I think D.C. is closed, too, because yes. I do some stuff up in D.C. And there's nothing. Yeah, so they're closed. In the meantime, I literally started a TikTok, like a sellout. And I got a YouTube channel going, which I've been wanting to do anyway. And um, I'm kind of just trying every other kind of method I can do, you know? When you, um, when you were doing stand-up, though, were you approached by guys from shows? And has that ever resulted in anything positive? People yell, show me your tits a lot. But, like, I don't... Serious? I, Still? Uh, at least once a month. But, like, I don't take that as... And my boobs are never even out during shows. Like, it's ridiculous. So, like, I don't take that as, like, approaching me like that's more like just oh no, i'm talking about after the show set up. oh okay um yeah but like i have this thing where like anytime someone's attracted to me i assume that they're like kind of a loser okay that's fair a lot of people have that yeah i'm like what's wrong with you or else i'm like turned off that they like me i'm like ew like what if i don't have to hunt for it then i don't want to eat it you know what i mean the guy who treats you like shit to be like okay this is not crazy. like shit, but just like, don't just, there's like a fine line between just don't be a douche. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Can I say that word? Yeah. You can say whatever the fuck you want. Okay. <laughs> so what, but, um, and it's like, if the world's hottest guy or like a very attractive guy came up to me after a show and was like, you were really funny. Would you like to get dinner? I'd probably be like, yeah, for sure. But like the people that I'm meeting at these shows are like, just <laughs> not it they're not it and social media like dms on social media i don't there's not one person you know that's I'm not sure, a good move i'm yeah. sure you have just as many facebook friends or whatever but i've got you know four thousand facebook people and i don't want to hang out with a single one of those people like not one out of four thousand i think i'm picky well that's but like picky in a bad way Mm, no, I think you should be picky. I mean, if a guy slides into your DMs, it's not going to be like a pot. It's a ninety percent of those are not going to be uh, winners. Oh yeah, I actually used to think that I had to respond to all of those people just to be polite, like "Hi, thanks." But like, my therapist told me that all they want to do is fuck me, and I don't have to say anything to any of them. But then they get angry and then they hate text. And they hate Doesn't messages. Under, does your therapist understand the need of like our Instagram followers? Like we need, we need them to keep following us. She yeah. clearly not, doesn't understand the business. But, but then if I say stuff back, if somebody's like, hey, beautiful, and I say something or back, then they're like, they want to have a conversation. Yeah. And like, I'm tie-dyeing. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm busy. <laughs> this tie-dyeing thing is going to be, uh, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a part of your life, I feel. You're going to have to, like, accept it. I have, I have 10,000 hobbies. It's just one of them. It was just what was happening today. Um, so if you're not going to be on the apps until you get this app figured out, situation figured out. I'm calling out. them. I swear to God, I'm calling them because I'm real sick. I haven't even made out with anybody in, like, literally, like, at least two months. Okay. Yeah, it's funny that I think for guys right now, it's it's – they can get away with murder because women haven't been uh, women haven't been like out and about and uh, they're just ready to hook up uh, and, and the guys can are, see I could hook up with any of these randos in my DMs yeah. and I don't want to do that either like I'd rather have sure. sex with no one than like look I, to, I'm not good to, at that yeah like, you have to they have to like meet your tie-dye threshold like is this worth $35 that I can make during sex. Like I can sell, I can make a tie dye in 30. How long does a shirt take to, to tie dye? Not long. Okay. 
So you're talking about like 30 minutes of sex versus a fun, enjoyable experience making a tie dye shirt, which also results in income. I'm assuming you're doing like five shirts in a sitting. If yeah, they're fucked up. So I figured. <laughs> yeah, I should have worn gloves. That would have been the go to, but you know. You can't get this much done with the tie-dye, I assume. No, I like to go hard. I like to feel the material and really know what I'm working with. Uh, Okay, so when you were on, other than apps, what other ways are you trying to meet people? Or are you... Well, honestly, like, dead honest, and I I do a lot of, I do a bit about it. It's really, dating sober is kind of hard. Yeah, I know. Because I, um, I... People think it's weird, first of all, and then I'm just like, own it. They're like, why don't you drink? I'm like, because I was like a raging alcoholic and it was killing me, so I stopped, you know? And like, I think that people, damn, I literally turned, took my phone off the thing. Hold on. (laughs) We're getting callers into the show. That's pretty awesome. The telemarketer, I hate you, stop. Okay. Um, It's fine. But guys think it's either going to be like, I'm not, well, I'm fun though. So it doesn't make any sense. I like, I like, I promise I'm as fun sober as like somebody else you dated wasted. Like, and, but for some reason, I think that people turn it into a, like a thing where it's like, they start judging themselves when I'm not drinking. They're like, like they feel bad about their own behavior when I don't even care. Like, I don't mind dating somebody that drinks as long as they, I I don't want to date somebody that's going to get shit faced every time we hang out like that's not cute but like they can socially drink and be normal but um I think I get one ruled out because of that a little bit and also um I'm not going to the bars unless I'm doing a show at a bar or if there's like an activity going on you know what I mean like there has to be like a thing for me to do there besides people yeah, just you can't just no I, I it is so I don't, I don't drink very often anymore. I'm not sober anymore, but I'm also not drinking. But I do agree with you that it's hard to go on dates because especially a first date, because people don't understand, they're like, oh, you don't drink. There's automatically, there's a stigma with sober dating or sober people. They don't know where to take you. Yeah, and then they get all weirded always- out and you're like, I don't give a shit what you do. I just, yeah. number one, don't drink that much anymore. And when I do... I don't drink before I do any shows or so yeah. for me when I was drinking because I don't drink before shows it wasn't worth it for me to like have a drink at 12 30 at night and then be like all right I want to keep going out everyone was like well we're done we've been drinking all day so I just stopped but um yeah. for dating though it does weird people out and it's so bizarre because I think for you you have a lot of personality and you were, it sounds like you're a raging alcoholic, so you, you know what fun is. But I then, was too fun. That's why I stopped. It was just well, like, that's what I'm saying. But then if you date other sober people, it's really hard to find people that are, so. it's not the same. Like, I don't want to date somebody right. particularly sober. Like, I don't, I mean, if they don't drink just because they don't enjoy it, like, that's fine. But, like, I don't go to AA because I just, it's just not my thing. I did for a while and I don't anymore, but, like, I don't want to date, I don't want to talk about the fact that I don't drink all the time. Like, it's not something I think about on a daily basis. So I don't want to date another, like, recovering alcoholic where we're like, do you remember back in the right. good old days when, yeah, it's like, I don't want to do that. I just want to live my life like a normal person. Huh? <laughs> You're just drinking coffee and smoking menthol cigarettes, reminiscing about the days before. I remember, yeah. Like, oh, I, drink, I remember Zima. Never clear. Yeah, exactly. Um, do you on your dating apps? Do you say that you're sober? Like, do you do you tell people that, or you just that's a reveal that you surprise them with when they see your um, your pink fingers? I usually tell people once they make like a first date, and they're like, "So you want me for happy hour?" And I was like, "I actually don't drink, but we can do something else. If you want to grab like, you know, like." tacos either yeah tacos if you want to do something you know what people do to, a lot they take me to indoor rock climbing like i feel like <laughs> i feel like these dudes want to be i swear they want to be creative but like there's only so many activities here so like 
their first date idea is always like somehow me hardcore working out at something. Like we have a thing that's like a zip line park. I've been taken to the zip line park probably five times. I've gone indoor rock climbing a lot. Like it's always like somehow me sweating my ass off on a first date. Why, why do you think that is? Because that's a really bizarre thing. To, I mean, if it happens once or twice, it but happens it happened, so a, that's really weird. Because you, I think they're what like, is your, your picture of you rock have, <laughs> no, I think they just want to be like creative and they don't ever do anything besides go to happy hour. So they're like, I'll, I'll think of something. I'm like, all right, great. I'm going to have to end up going to rock climbing again. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> But I like to act like I've barely met. I like to act like I've never really been or I've only been like once or twice so that I'm just like a natural. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm so good at this. The staff like recognize you like, oh, she's fat. I, can't do with she's I like have my, own, have my own gear. I'm just kidding. Yeah, they're like, like, oh, you keep coming back with these random dudes that all look the same, but this one's like an Asian version of the narcissist you dated. I don't know. <laughs> exactly. What, um, well, let me ask you this. How did you meet the guy that you dated for five years? How did that, ha how did that come out? Rock climbing? <laughs> rock climbing, hardcore rock climbing. No, I already, well, he went to the high school that was like down the street from my high school. So I used to, I remembered him from like parties back in the day, but then he was always like really little. And then what I used to have bartended at this bar for like seven years called Kokomo's. It was like this big outdoor tiki bar. And uh, it's like the spot down here. But I saw him one time and I was like, Jimmy got hot. And then like, we just started hanging out. I kind of made it happen in like a weird way. Not in a weird way, but like, not in a weird way. But we, a bunch of us, I had friends that were his friends. And we went to somebody's birthday and we went bowling, which was really random. And I was like, my car is not here. Can I ride with you to the next spot? And then you know, that was it. But your car really was there. So you had to go back and get your car. Yeah, I Ubered back the next day. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> okay, so you met that guy. You can't meet anyone on Hinge. You met the comedian through comedy, I assume. Yeah, he sucked. Co yeah, comedian. Why would you date a comedian? I didn't know better yet. And then I tried it, and he was like, you know what he reminds me of? Have you ever seen, um, what movie is it? There's a movie where oh the Braveheart? other have you seen the, have you seen the other yeah that's it um have you seen the other guys i think so with will Ferrell. Wall, with yeah. yeah so there's a scene in that movie where like they have to go interview this girl that will ferrell used to date at his house and the husband is there and he's like come back here and fuck my wife he's like this fat nasty guy with like a like a yeah. sweater on so every time i would see this comic I would just think, come back here and fuck my wife. Like he was like that guy in my head. So like he ended up- <laughs> Look like or because of how he acted? I think both. I don't know. Like, Mostly like, how he looks like. He wore a lot of sweater vests and he had like kind of a gut. I hope he watches this. Wait, I just posted on Instagram of me in a sweater vest from the 90s. Like is that- Well that's okay, that's okay. Okay. Old school. You but, um, bigger guys is that your thing no i honestly i used to date Tr like mine just very ex attractive men like i that was my type people were like what's your type i'm like real attractive until i started doing stand-up and then you know if you do comedy and you're funny you're three like three points higher on the oh, scale just because you're in comedy so you're like he was great. like he was like a four on a good day, but like he was a seven because I thought he was funny until I realized he like never even watched any of my sets, even though we'd be in like shows together. <laughs> and like he just like didn't care about anything but his own shit, you know? But um narcissism that you attracted. Oh yeah. He like he really liked attention, but not just from like me, just like from everyone, you know? Well, and that's the problem with it. yeah, but some people are in comedy because they like like to make people happy. They like had a hard time as a child. I mean, I think that's part of it. Had a hard time, like to have a lot of trauma. And so they learned to, you know, be funny based on that. And then there's the people that just really, really, really like attention. And yeah. I mean, granted all of us like attention, but there's some people that take it to the next level 
and this dude took it to the next level. So you clearly need to be the the you're the you're the artist in a relationship. Are you? Do you now realize that you would need like a yin and yang to you? Because you have like a power, like a you have a strong personality. You've got a lot of shit going on for you. Like how can you? How can you date some? You've got to date like a boring, attractive dude, right? I ended up dating. So we're in like a really big military town. Like okay. the so like the like Navy SEALs are based out of Virginia Beach. Like that's what our town is. And like I have found with any of those type of guys that I've hung out with, and I'm stereotyping because several of my girlfriends are married to people that do the same job, and I really respect it, and it works for them. But like. I find that I have too big a personality for people that are like, I don't know how to explain it. Like they almost want me to just shut up and like, yeah. Be and like, yeah. you have a big personality where certain men can be, would be intimidated by or like can't accept because they're traditional views of, um, I think that uh, is, it's more of like that type of guy is like a more traditional type of yeah. like they want a traditional relationship you know, and I don't, I don't fit that you know what I mean even though that's like you know even though that's the right way women shouldn't talk until spoken to you of course <laughs> of course yeah you you need to yeah like I think that but there are people that are like timid um accountants or like people that would be like nerds that are attractive physically that are smart i assume you need someone smarter they need to know i mean smart's good i funny is a big one though which is the comedy thing like the, yeah, like why i attracted to find a funny guy a funny smart. guy that'll let me be like the star of the show sometimes and not get jealous that people pay attention to me that turned out to be a big one with my ex is like he really didn't like when other people the ex five attention. years or the comedian yeah the five year the five year one the other one didn't give a shit he didn't, didn't even i don't think he even knew when i was on stage yeah he was the one yelling show us your tits probably <laughs> yeah exactly what, uh what was the uh what did the narcissist guy do for work he was a civil engineer. Hmm. You yeah. know, he made me, he made, not made me, but like he strongly encouraged me to get breast implants because, because he was a civil engineer, he likes things to be perfectly symmetrical. What, were your boobs not symmetrical? No, they were, they were just little. So it's like uh -oh. bullshit. But like, that's why he likes fake boobs so much. He told me as every girl he's ever dated has had fake boobs is because you know, he thinks like that very, like he, he, and he did like things in our house to be like very balanced, but like, that's why he's like a huge proponent for fake tits is because. Wait, you said uh, your house, you lived with him for five years? Not for the whole five, but we moved in together after a year. Oh dear God. But even the first, the first year that I didn't live with him, I lived with my friend Jen and he still, I remember he slept over every night besides six times in the whole year. How old were you when you moved in with him? 30. Okay. So you weren't like in your, you were, you were, you should know better than to move in after a year with somebody. I don't you know. think so? I, I don't think I still know better. Yeah. Oh, he was, is he your age then? He's my age. He's a year younger than me, but like, I think a year of dating somebody is long enough to know. But honestly, I knew better. You're right. I knew better before I moved in because he had red flagged the hell out of me and gone through my closet while I was at work and found a bunch of pictures of me on vacation with like the guy I dated before him, which I also dated for five years. Oh my and, um, we didn't even get into that. But they weren't even like sexual. They were just like us on vacation. They were in a bag that I had had when I moved. Never looked through the bag. And I got the silent treatment for like a week because I had saved these photos. Just weird shit like that where you're like, oh, you yeah. years. and why are you in my damn closet? You know what I mean? Get out of my closet, you freak. But right. like, I remember thinking this is a bad idea. And then like it was. And my dog was scared of him. And if dogs don't like people, there's a really good reason why dogs don't like people, you know? What are the, okay, other than being attractive, other than not being a comedian, other than like understanding that you are the big personality in the relationship, what are your other things that you require? 
I don't mind if somebody has an equally funny. big personality. Yeah, they but, have a big personality too. I just have an excessive amount. I feel like perhaps. Yeah, I don't. I think your personality is going to have to be with somebody. I, I mean, I don't know you that well, but I assume that most guys would, that also are big personalities would be like, "This is. It's not like a dream." They want to be the star of the show. Yeah. Yeah. You need like the guy who's like the funniest guy in his office, but he does like a boring job, but he's also like watches like knows all the good comedians. He doesn't watch Larry the Cable Guy. Like he knows good comedy, but also um, knows his place in the in the comedy echelon of your relationship. Like you're the comedian, but he's also funny. Good luck. Yeah, just guy. a normal yeah. dude that doesn't have a desire to do comedy, but is still really funny would be cool. What, what's your type in good looking? Like, what's good looking to you? Redheads, blondes. Uh, I, I guess normally dark hair, but like, I don't have a huge preference as long as they're like commercially attractive. Unless they're a comic, and then they can be ugly as hell. <laughs> no, you can't date another comedian. You, you've got to promise me you won't do that. Like, I'll probably end up dating a comedian. Where else am I going to meet anybody? At the tie-dye store. I don't know. I, um... Your app's back. I watch, I watch this dating coach. His name's Matthew Hussey. I watch him on YouTube, and he's always talking about how you should just, like, casually, randomly strike up a conversation. Like, go to, like, the bookstore and just strike up a random conversation and I'm like that's the kind of shit that makes me want to like like it that just I, I'm not gonna say it but I that is not what I want to do you know what I mean so no, like not a good idea no but anyway um I just want somebody funny smart good looking good job doesn't get jealous when I'm on stage good dresser but a fixer upper is fine. I don't even mind a bit of a dad bod because like then he probably won't cheat on me, you know? And then um Okay. Likes his parents, has a good relationship with his family, likes dogs, especially small dogs. Um likes me, that'd be cool. I'm glad you put that on the list. That would be important, yeah. Doesn't just want to have sex with me, that'd be cool too. Yeah. What a, like, uh, um, are there the deal breakers though? Like what are the deal breakers for guys other than not tie dyeing? I have a ton of deal breakers until I'm like attracted to someone and then I don't have any. What are the main ones? Um, the main ones, jealousy is a big one. Okay. I, I, I don't mind a little bit. Like sometimes it's like endearing if somebody gets slightly jealous, but like if they're jealous, like the guy I dated for five years gave me the silent treatment once because the car in front of me at Starbucks bought my coffee. And like, and it was like literally probably a woman. She was in a minivan and it was like probably a pay it forward thing because I bought the car behind me their coffee when she bought mine. And he happened to be on the phone with me and he gave me the silent treatment because he said that I was obviously putting myself out there to appear single. I'm like, they probably can't even see in my car. So, like, I don't want a dude that, like, gets weirdly jealous about dumb yeah, shit. That's fucked um, up. I like people that are, like, like, my love languages particularly are, like, words of affirmation and physical touch. So, like, I like when people say nice things to me. And then physical touch isn't just, like, sexual. It's just, like, you can hug me sometimes. You know what I mean? And I kind of have, like depression and when I say like kind of have like I massively have depression so like sometimes I need somebody to give me a little like pep talk you know like I need somebody that can understand that like I'm super moody sometimes and sometimes I just need somebody to like tell me that everything's gonna be fine and like hug me that's not sounds- like oh pull yourself up by your bootstraps like I'm not like a tough love kind of girl you know well, you need to, the first thing you need to do is pay your bills for your apps so you can get back online because you're not going to meet some dude at a bookstore that meets all this shit. Um, it's just not possible. And then on Hinge, you could, or if you go on any of those apps, you could like do a picture with your fingers, can be like, no, I didn't kill anybody. I didn't kill, just tie dyed. Or you can even be like, ask me about my hands. And then they'll be like, then you That's- can bring in the tie dye. This is a weird thing to say. Ask. I'm gonna put that on a T-shirt. <laughs> where can uh, where can people find out more about you? We're out of time here, Mindy. Where can people find you other than tie dyeing uh, 
wherever it is that you're tie dyeing. My name is pretty much just me on everything. So like I'm Mindy S on Facebook. Um, I'm ESS. It's yeah. M I N D Y E S S. Yeah, you say my my last name just like the letter S. I'm Mindy S on YouTube. I have a YouTube channel all about being a babe on a budget. And um, I'm Mindy S. Did I say TikTok? TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. I'm just Mindy S. All so. right. I'm going to follow you on TikTok because I just got on there as well. So awesome. I can't <laughs> open it right now because, you know, the app store thing. I, I, but I, like, oh, yeah, that's right. You can't even do it. That's hilarious. I've been doing it, but today it said I needed to update it because it had been a month and I tried, I can't update it. And so they're just like, sorry about your luck, girl. So now the TikTok thing is more important than the dating. So I'll probably <laughs> go to the app store, the Apple store. I can't wait to see your TikTok on. Um, on tie dyeing, I hope you have one. I have one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look for it right now. So, okay. All right, Mindy. Thanks so much for uh, joining us on Singles Only Podcast, and thank you everyone for listening to another edition or watching if that's what you're doing. Uh, thank you and God bless. But I'm still